A few videos ago, I said we set the command here to supervisor, so we have a command that the Docker uses to run by default if you do not define a command when you start a container. So if I do docker run here once again, and I'll keep using the IT flag here to keep this in the foreground, I don't define a command at the end here, right? I could define bash, I could define nginx, I could define supervisor, whatever happens to live inside of the container that I want to run. I usually want to use supervisor, and that's what I use as the default command, but anything I use here is going to override that command, right? So if I use bash, I'll be in the container running bash instead of the supervisor command. What I want to show you is a different way to go about using a default command when you start a container, and that is through an entry point command. Now, an entry point command is either a command or a shell script. Yeah, so I'm actually going to create a shell script, a bash script, and I call it start container. Now, an entry point has a very important distinction versus command. An entry point is going to get used no matter what command you run. So no matter what I run or say to do at the end of this, it's going to run the entry point command, and then it's just going to pass whatever I type here to it. So the very basic bash command here, what we can actually do, can actually mimic the command. So we're going to do that first, so it actually won't change the behavior. So we're going to have a start container file, and I'm going to do dash sh here just so I get the type hints that are correct in my code editor here user bin env bash. So use env to get the uh, correct bash script, the location of the correct bash script for the current environment. And I'm actually just going to get into bash here and make sure env exists. It does. Perfect. So env bash just gives me uh, the correct bash. And then what do we want to do here? And what we're going to do here is one of two things. If we pass the start container script a command, it's going to run it. So it's going to execute the exact command we passed and all the flags and whatever we pass it. Otherwise, it's going to run supervisor, and this is the location of supervisor explicitly. OK, so I'll show you what this does. So we have the entry point here, and then we need to add it, and I haven't done that yet. So we're going to do add start container.sh, and we're going to put it in user bin start container, so it's in the path and becomes available. And then I'm going to run chmod plus x user bin start container. OK, so we're going to add start container sh, we're going to rename it start container, and then we're going to do chmod plus x start container, and then that will be available to use. So we can go ahead and rebuild this. And everything's from cache, except for those last two things we put, because it's just at the end of the file. And then we should be able to do a docker run here, and do docker run, I'm going to define nothing, and hopefully this will run supervisor, and it's perfect. Okay, so let's get out of that. And if it's not supervisor, then what's it going to do? Well, I'm going to pass it bash, and what this is actually going to do is still run start container. It's still going to run our bash script. But because our bash script is going to see that we have more than zero uh, items passed to it, it's going to actually just execute where we pass it instead of starting supervisor. And that worked. Now I'm in as bash. OK, so what's the benefit of that? Well, the benefit of that is that we can actually do a bunch of stuff here if we need to. So for example, if you run this natively on Linux, you might run into some file permission errors that you won't normally run into if you're running this on Macintosh or Windows. And one of those things is that the directory .composer tends to exist on the root location of the drive, and you might need to actually make sure that exists and that it's writable by everyone. User group and other can read and write to this directory. And the reason we do this is because users running this on native Linux might run into an issue where when you do a composer action within the container, it doesn't work because the doc composer directory either doesn't exist or isn't written to. So you can make sure things are set up in your Docker container before the main action actually happens this way, and you can do all sorts of stuff. I've done configuration in here to make sure xdebug is set up correctly. I've done configuration to make permissions are set up. I've read environment flags to see if it's a production or a development container to enable or disable certain modules or other things. You can do all sorts of things in the start container script, and that's why it's really useful to have this. And you can mimic the same behavior as using CMD instead of entry point, right? You can just say, if I pass you a command, then just run that command. Otherwise, just default to whatever I want to be defaulted here. So that's a really powerful way to configure your containers as they start up, as they spin up, and before they get to their main action. And in this case, our main action is to start supervisor.